السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین نبینا محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ڈیئر برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز ویلکم ٹو انسپائرڈ بائی اسلام مے اللہ بلیس یو اور فیملی اینڈ ایوری بوڈی ماشاء اللہ جزاکم اللہ خیرا فار بینگ ود اس الحمد للہ وی ہیو جسٹ لائک ادر ڈیز ماشاء اللہ وی ہیو امیزنگ گیسٹ ان اور شو Alhamdulillah, and this brother, mashallah, done his shahada in Ramad, last Ramadan, about six months ago. And uh, um, he's amazing, and his new name is Ahiya, inshallah. So let's find out how and why he became Muslim, and inshallah, we'll get inspired by that. Uh, brother Ahiya, welcome to our show. And what's your full name, brother? John Yahya Stephen Anderson. Mashallah. Um, just told us, brother and sister, you became Muslim in the last Ramadan. It's amazing, a blessing month. And um, tell us how you... Uh, started your journey? Um, I've worked in a school, predominantly Bangladeshi school, Muslim school, for the last nine, ten years now. Um, I've witnessed the people, what they do, how they patrol their life, um, how things go on. I um, was quite taken back by the kindness, the openness, the generosity wow. and the, the no There was nothing selfish about anything. You know, you do something for someone and you don't expect any reward. And that was what I saw a lot of. A um, few years, well, about 30 years ago, I lost my nan, um, which was a big part of my life. Um, at that point, I couldn't understand why she was taken. And at that point, there was no... If there was a God at that point, um, I couldn't understand why they would take someone so nice away from me. So were you angry that time? That I was angry, yeah. Yeah, uh, there was a lot of anger in me then, a lot of bitterness, um, because she was part of my life, a big part of my life. And she hadn't done nothing wrong. She was a lovely woman, so why take her? And I couldn't understand that. Um, and that stayed with me for years. Um, it wasn't until I got talking to the staff and the people I work with. How was, uh, can I just ask you, yeah. that time, because there are a lot of people actually, I'm sure that they probably feel like you do, I um, mean, lose their loved ones and they, you almost like blame God for it. Yeah. Um, but do you think it's why, if you don't believe in a creator, but you, you blame the creator it, for doing it? It's hard it. to, yeah, you, bl you blame God, but, but you in, in yourself you don't believe in a God. See. So it's a bit... Does, is, it, is it sensible, you think, though? But it, it doesn't not, make not sense. Probably, yeah, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Could be a lot of, lot of people, they're trying it, to a way out. It's like saying, blaming someone that you don't believe in. Yeah, How it's can like... You blame it, something that's not yeah, there? Yeah, it's like John, uh, Mr. John lives in the next door, but he's not there. Yeah, you know, it's it, an empty house, but... You, it, do you get me? Yeah. He doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of us go through trials, and yeah. some trials are, are very difficult ones, like you had one. Yeah. Um, did you have a faith before? Before your mum passed, or uh, nan passed away? Not a predominant faith at all. I was brought up in a Christian family. Um, but even then it wasn't um, a very sort of um, practicing Christian family. Um, but the, the only faith we had was the Christian side. Um, that was from school, because it was a Christian school I went to. We, you know, we'd have hymns and prayers in the morning, every morning. Um, but not really believing in it. It was, you did it because you, you did it. There was nothing behind it at all. Um, but you still, when this happened, you still blame God. Yeah. Although you don't <laughs> believe he's there. <laughs> okay. Um, that time, I just want to know but first, that time, has it ever crossed your mind that um, I have a purpose? I was created for a purpose. I'm talking about yours. Did you Going ever? back to that point? Yeah. No. No, I'd, I'd, I suppose in a way you believe that you're doing your life because of what you want to do. It's almost like, uh, it's I don't care, I'm here. I'm I, doing what I want to do. Let me enjoy myself. Yeah. Let me enjoy myself, yeah. okay. I'm going to make the most of whatever's around me, what I've got. It's my life, I'll do it. And there wasn't any look at outside life or doing anything else other than that. Did you hate religion that time? Um, or blame religion? I blame religion, I won't yes. say hate, but... You I'd, know. I certainly would blame religion, yeah. yeah. In what sense? What would you, like, what would you say that... Um, I had a belief at that point that If religion's so good, how could it do something so bad? And it's not only, 
I suppose in a way, not only just from that side of it, but when you look at different wars and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, although it's, it's always associated that it's a religious reason, but really it's not. To me, it's not. It's more of a political and the, it is and political the, and the power and all that and stuff. And people seem to hide behind the religion. Okay. They use that as a shield to actually hide their self. It's pure, more like what they believe in and what they want to do. Mm, okay. Um, then, but it makes it easier to hide behind a religion, so they can't get full blame for it. So at this moment, we know that uh, there was a, there was a report like five percent of the regular prayers in UK. That means ninety five percent people don't don't pray. They they're not religious. Yeah. Um, what would you think that it's a big number, isn't it? It is a big number, yeah. And you wouldn't. Who would you, who would you, 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 would you blame the that. religious groups leaders? But we're not doing enough work for it, or what do you think? Or Personally, I think society mm -hmm. has changed a lot of things. Um, it's made, I think it's made people selfish. Because there's so much out there now, you can just turn around and go and get what you want. Mm. We as humans, on, you know, in, this, in our Western societies more so, we take so much for granted. Everything's there for us. Yeah. You know. Um, I don't need nothing. Yeah, I don't, there's nothing you I know, need for. I can be who I am. Yeah, I can do anything I like. I there's really nothing yeah. stopping me. Okay. And I haven't got to worry about anyone else. Okay, so um, let's go back to your Shahada again. You've done six months ago, you've done your Shahada. So you looked at those young uh, um, students and you think there's something different here. Yeah. So you picked up their kindness and selflessness and all that stuff. Um, what else did you pick up? Because you are learning now something there new. Was there was um, a community sense that I've never experienced before. Break it down. It was like, ask. I mean, there's 480 children at our school. Plus you've got the parents. Plus you've got the staff. Um, so you're looking at about 1,000 people. Yet that 1,000 people seem to be one family. Wow. I come from a society where no one talked to their neighbours. You know, you didn't talk to anyone. You kept yourself to yourself and done what you did. Um, but it was like, if there was a problem, there was, mo there was plenty of people on hand to help. Everyone was there. You're not, you, n you never felt alone. And it was like it was one big family. Everyone knew each other. Everyone supported each other. Um, and a big thing that I noticed was um, the charity side. It was quite quite astounding that when we done, I've done charity things before in previous, you know, years back, you do it on your own street or, you know, at school or somewhere like that, you get five or six people that contribute to it. Um, with the school, it was everyone. No matter what it was, everyone got involved and they all wanted to do their part for it. That's amazing, man. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah. really amazing. Um, before your Shahada, b or before you became Muslim, you used to fast? Yes, for the last... Tell us why you used to fast. The last four years I've done that. It's working in a Muslim school, or predominantly Muslim school. Um, you get the, the staff who are coming in tired, worn out, hungry looking, ill. Um, I'm, I'm sure you feel sorry for them. <laughs> I did feel sorry <laughs> okay. for them. You, want to, you know, sometimes you want to give them a glass of water, you know, but you can't. But, and then it was a case of... I'm the sort of person that I won't comment on something or make a judgment unless I've done it myself. So it was a case of um, I got challenged by one of the staff members. He says, do it for a day, see how it is. So we agreed. And so I said, I could, if I do it for a day, we do it for the whole 30 days. You don't, you know, if you're going to do it, do it properly. So I did it for the first year. Um, how was it for you then? Your experience of first uh, few days, tell me. It was okay. It was okay. It was a bit weird because you, you, everything's set to a time um, and you're restricted. Um, sometimes you wake up a bit late. You didn't late. cheat in the middle, right? No, I didn't, no. So I didn't the timing was all. right? I the, obviously, the, the only difference for me was that I wasn't doing the prayers okay. in between it all. But I was still waking up at the same time. I was still waking up at prayer time in the morning. Um, I literally followed it all the way through. Um, and it was enlightening, to be honest with you. And you, you felt better for it. I did wow. feel better for it. 
because you felt like you was cleansing yourself. Um, and then it just stuck. So I did it for the last, what, this is my fourth year now that I've done it. What made you to click to do Shahada? That I want to become Muslim, I want to submit myself to the Creator. And um, I think it was what, more and more. What was the point? More and more listening to people. Although there's not a point where you think, I didn't ever set myself a goal of, oh, I'm going to do this. Um, I, you just take it in. You take it in, you take it in, take it in, and you see what people are doing. And then all of a sudden, it just. I woke up one morning and it literally just clicked then. It was. The time's right. It was as if I was, in a way, as if I was told, this, this the time's right now to do it. Um, and I'd never thought about doing it before. I just woke up on that Tuesday and then organised it, and it was literally done on that Saturday. Some people say it's before the Shahada or before the prayers that they, had, they see some signs hmm. that I've seen that is pushing me towards that. I've seen this, it's pushing me towards that. I had this dream. Someone telling me to do this. Did you have any kind of signs like that? I had. I mean, there was always times where I kept looking and seeing. What I do, I would do, is reflect on an issue or a challenge. And you'd look at it from my perspective, as I normally would. And then I would look at it, how I perceive it now, or then from what I've heard from other people. And it just seemed that that was a a better way of dealing with things. And it just wanted, I wanted to get some purpose in my life. Because I didn't feel like I belonged. Um, I didn't have reason. And it was a point there, I needed to do something. And it was, I mean it might have been, the, I don't know, it was, I suppose it was strange in the sense that I actually went to the mosque on that Sunday. Um, and that was just to meet a friend out there. Um, but it did feel calming in there. I've been at mosque a few times for events and stuff like that. And every time I've walked in and gone in, I've, it's like you're leaving stuff at the door. Okay. You walk in, it's peaceful, it's relaxed, it's friendly. Um, I'll leave that outside there. I'll pick it up on the way back out. Okay. You know, that's how it felt. That's how it felt. Subhanallah. Okay, so Tuesday, you're ready to do Shahada. Yeah, yeah. So, um, is there anyone influenced you or give you more information than anyone else? Is there anyone who actually trying to help you out on that one? Um, it would be good to mention that first and he might feel good. I don't know. It was a couple of, I mean, the, the, the reasoning and I suppose the way of life side of it, I've got generally from all the staff. A couple of staff there more than most. Um, what I found was good though, is that no one's, no one has pressured me. No one has forced it on me. No one said, I'll oh, go and do this, go and do that, you know. No one's done that, um, which was good. Because you do get these yeah, religious yeah, yeah, people yeah. knocking at your door, you know, do you believe this, do you believe this, do you know this? Um, it was left to me. Um, but yeah, there's been a few people that have sort of supported me on my journey. Um, but in the main, if, I'll be honest with you, if I was talking to, saying it to anyone or sort of recommending to anyone, is just go to the mosque. Yeah. Be honest with you, just go to the mosque because anyone in that building will help you. Brilliant. Okay, you've done your shahada now. Now you, yeah. you've you done your shahada. How was, how was the feeling like? Um, the feeling was very weird. I've never had a feeling like it. It was... As I said, it's, it's okay, like... If someone watching knew, they, they don't know how you become Muslim. Yeah. So what happens, can you give us a go through with that? Say you, you go and sit down with the Imam or someone who knows. You sit down with the Imam, you can take someone with you as okay. support. Um, I took someone with me. Um, you take your shahada. Um, it's very informal, it's not a big scary thing to do. Um, it's just two sentences. You know, it's it, it is, it's Allah, just two sentences. Yeah. And, and you've it. got a choice. You can do it just with the Iman, or you've got the option of doing it in front of the congregation in, in okay. the mosque. You know, that's a personal preference. Um, to me, I did it with the Iman because it was more, it, at that point, it was about my personal journey. And I wanted to get that, I wanted to get that peace for myself. 
So what was going through your uh, that time? It's a pressure. You you actually um, submitting to something that wholeheartedly. Yeah. And there's no turn back almost. It is. Yeah. So it's, how was it? It's for very you? nervous. How was it? For it you? was very nervous. What was um, going through your mind? You you. And you get a lot of anticipation because you don't know what. In some sense, you look at it, you don't know what's going to change after that. Although it's only like five, ten minutes, you don't know what's going to change. You don't know how you're going to feel. Um, but personally, for me, um, once I'd done the Shahada, it was like I'd been chained for 30, 40 years. You was? That's how I felt. And then them chains had been let go. I literally walked out of the room feeling totally at peace. And the stuff that I normally left at the door had gone. Wow. It was, it was, it was enlightening and very emotional. Very emotional. Did you cry on that time? I, there was tears, yeah. 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 Which is not like me, but there was. It just, it, it's something that just comes over you. And there is no control over it. I don't know how that happens. Honestly, um, well, men normally don't cry. Yeah. I, I've been into a few shahada, witnessed myself, and most people would cry. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like, it's, they don't have that control anymore. They no. don't have that control. Because you you, yeah. yeah. people won't do that. No. Especially on that time. Yeah. You know, you've been pictured, you've been recorded, all that stuff. You wouldn't show your, that no, side. No, you normally, but can I you, suppose your self-control is there normally through life. Do you feel connected when as soon as you do your shahada? You feel some connection. You do. You feel part of it. You feel that, for once, for me personally, it was like you're not alone anymore. Oh, beautiful voice. You, you're not alone. I've gone through life. You always feel alone, no matter what your problems are. You, you, you know. But the minute I done this, I didn't feel alone. I, I had that feeling that I belonged. I had a reason. Um, and all these people around me was all part of my family. Wow. That's how it felt, you know. Okay, let me give you a scenario. Mm. So imagine you, are, you, are, um, you worked in a, a, a Christian dominant school. Imagine, just change your side, yep. and then you liked everything they do. And would you, would you become religious that time? What difference would that make? Um, for me, probably no different. Would you, would you be religious on that time? Like, wh what difference would you make that this is the faith of uh, um, the country and this is Islam? So we have differences <coughs> and we have, of course, differences. Of yeah. Course, creed is yeah. different as well. Yeah. So do you think it just the environment changed you or you actually choose to become Muslim that now that makes sense to me and it makes sense to me? It doesn't matter whatever happens. There was a more of an understanding. Okay. Um, with the Christian side, I've read the Bible. Um, it's like a story. Um, yeah, I can believe, you know, believe what was on there and what was going on and stuff. Um, but you don't get that. When I've walked into a church before, every time I walk into a church, or I have walked into a church, I felt cold. As if it's, there's not that welcoming feeling to it. And you don't see that togetherness. You don't feel part of a great thing. You still feel on your own, really, as such. Um, whereas the Muslim side, it just felt like one big group that was, it was all part of one. The way we, the way we describe a creator, I mean, I mean uh, and Allah, that he's uncreated, he's yeah. nothing like him, he's independent, he doesn't sleep, he does not like his creation. Hmm. There's a difference between creator and creation. Yeah. Yeah. And um, these are big differences f f from uh, other, other faith. Yeah. And um, we only ask God to forgive. No one in the middle, there's no middle man no. for that. And um, we don't worship anything else apart from God. Yep. So did all these things make sense to you? It did make sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, but one thing you used, we don't have much time, one thing you used was amazing that you said, I don't feel lonely anymore. I don't, no. I mean, this is a beautiful, yeah. beautiful word you used. I, I'm just never alone anymore. I could be in a room, middle of a field, but I'm still not alone. Okay, we have only two more minutes. Okay, I want you to say something to the Muslim uh, youth that 
uh, probably don't have a strong identity. They feel they're in the middle, I'm British and, and whatever, but your faith matters. Yeah, it does matter. What yeah. would you say to them? I would in, uh, this start campaign? looking at what you do. Um, yes, you might be having a bit of fun, a, a laugh, and you know, doing your own thing. Um, but there will come a point where you've got to account for what you do. Um, you can still have a good life, but you've still got to account for things that you do. Um, just try and respect everything around you. Um, just get back into the mosque and just give it a go and see if that, you know, if it can support and help you. You know, I don't know how, I don't know how to thank you. I know you know well, and actually I almost pushed you to bring you here. <laughs> and um, I would like to bring you again, yep. definitely. I want to know, just before we finish, your first sajood, the first time you actually prayed to the Creator, you now you believe with your yep. soul and heart. How was it for you, that sajood? It was quite overwhelming. Because you're actually, you actually, there's the feeling there you, that you are praying to someone. You're not praying for the sake of praying. You're actually directing it and someone's listening. That's, you know, that was a big thing. And I suppose the biggest thing that overwhelmed me was the Friday prayer. Wow. To be in a mosque where it's just jam-packed. You know, they're, they're praying in the corridors, the, the, the yeah. stairs, you know. And to be part of that, it's, well, it's a feeling I, I've never had before. And I want to thank you for coming to our show. You're welcome. And uh, may Allah bless you, may Allah accept you, and may Allah leave us, give us a good life, and of course, life after death is well. Jazakumallah khair. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, we just had our brother, um, amazing journey to Islam, and the way he feels how he prays, and the way he's connected with Allah. Most of us born as a Muslim don't have that connection, so we need to actually see what we are making wrong. Do I know my religion well? Am I connected with Allah? Do I love his creation? Do I love the people around me? And it's really important to know that we have for a purpose and our job is to make a better uh, life here and a life after death. So may Allah bless everybody and watching and see you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.